Hello, this is Bern, and if you're not sure why something feels off in a guy, and you don't want to end the dating process of the relationship because you might be missing out on something great, so you feel stuck, in today's video, I'm gonna share five elusive and often missed signs that show you he's not the guy for you, so you can stop wasting your time and invest it instead in someone who can be a fulfilling and compatible life partner for you. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Listen, there's three distinct stages of connection with someone in the early dating stages or a relationship that tell you if something feels right or it feels wrong. My imagination is if you're watching this video, something either felt wrong in someone and you're trying to make sense of it, or something feels off right now. So the first stage is flow and clarity. Flow and clarity is when things are moving forward the way they're supposed to move forward. You feel a clear sense of progress. You understand him, he understands you. There's a vision for where you both are going and there's no games and there's no BS. The second one will be when there's deal breakers and when there's signs that make you really stop and pause or maybe altogether say, I can't do this, I'm not in it for the long haul, we're not compatible. Either one of those two things, one feels fun, the other one doesn't, but both of them create either the moving forward or ending a relationship. The problem that you're facing right now if you're watching this video is a third stage that I call ambivalence. Ambivalence is where you kind of want this relationship to work, but you're not sure if it's really working or not. Where you get some mixed signals from him and it feels like things are progressing and then you're going back a few steps that make you feel like really pull the rock from under you. So my hope through this video is that if you're facing any of the situations or traps as I'll describe them on the video today, that you can put some words to the feelings that you're having and instead of feeling crazy or like there's nothing you can do to change things, that you can see some patterns that you may not have been seeing before and either take action to see if you can resolve them or make a decision to move forward and stop wasting your time trying to fit a shoe that maybe is size 7 into a foot size 9. It just doesn't work. You can potentially do it, but why hurt yourself in the process? So what are some signs that you might be in one of these ambivalent relationships that I'm talking about right now, where you need to take a look at the patterns taking place to recognize why it doesn't feel good? Maybe things feel great with him, and all of a sudden when things are going really well, he does something that's completely opposite from what you expect that makes you have a really shitty aftertaste, sometimes for, for days, <laughs> sometimes for weeks. Maybe you feel that even though he is a great guy and you don't understand him, that you're more into him than he's into you. Not necessarily when you see each other, but when you don't, you don't get a clear sense that he really wants to move things forward. Or maybe you feel that he, you have to bargain for his time and his attention, and it feels icky to you for, for you to do that. Uh, maybe you have a lingering feeling he's hiding something. Maybe you don't feel he's genuinely in it as much as you are. So whatever the case might be, these are just some examples of things that might be taking place. If something doesn't feel quite right and you haven't been able to put words into these feelings, here's the first trap or the first sign that he might not be the best guy for you. Number one is he craves distance from you. And not only does he crave distance from you, but he thrives when he gets distance from you. Like, listen, in any relationship, there's give and take. There is the union of someone and there's a separation in terms of doing your own thing, connecting with your friends, having your own passions, having your own goals. But the goal of connecting with someone in a meaningful relationship is so that you can combine life, so that you can do things together, not just things alone, so that you can have a sense of connection, so that you can have a sense of feeling and expression that makes your life exponentially better through the addition of somebody else's life is also great. When you connect with someone who's pretty avoidant and you're not an avoidant person, then the, the challenge with that connection, especially if you are someone who, who has an anxious attachment style, for example, or who needs more reassurance, 
that type of connection, connection with someone who craves distance, who craves independence, who craves spending time alone more than spending time with you, that's the kryptonite of our relationship. Here's why. Because there's nothing you can do or say that's going to help him change his style and want to have more intimacy with you. And there's nothing he can do or say that's going to make you feel like you're not getting the short end of the stick. So th some of the sh things that I'll be sharing with you right now are significant enough where it may not be worth it to you, regardless of other areas of commonality and common interests, to be with someone where you're constantly feeling like he's pushing you away, constantly feeling like you're begging for his attention, constantly feeling like you're more into him than he's into you. If you, and here's one of the challenges, one of the challenges is that if you are an avoidant type of person, like the person that I'm talking, describing right now, they are more abundant in the dating space. Why? Because they don't tend to go into long relationships. So they circulate on the dating pool more often than people who don't have that type of attachment style. So if you find yourself not knowing what's going on, but recognizing through what I'm saying to you right now, that the person that you're with is someone who doesn't crave intimacy, and you do, do yourself a favor and move on. <laughs> Number two is uh, when it's kind of the opposite, when maybe you're more secure, or maybe you're more avoidant, and the person that you're connecting with is needing reassurance constantly. That doesn't necessarily mean that it can't work, but when no matter how much you reassure this person, it's still not enough. When no matter how much you tell them that you're, you love them or that you like them, uh, how much you tell them that they're beautiful in your eyes, how much you tell them that they're the one person for you and that, that, you're, uh, that you're not cheating on, uh, on them, but they always have this lingering feeling that you are, even if it's not true, then that's one of the situations where this is what I call, the first one is what I call the kryptonite trap, right? Because it's the kryptonite of a person who has that type of attachment. The second one would be the prison trap. The prison trap because you feel like you can never fulfill that other person's expectations because you always feel like you can't be yourself because through being yourself, if you arrive to, a, let's say, a party and you're just naturally friendly and the person feels like you're flirting with people even though you aren't, I mean, and there's a clear distinction between being friendly and flirting with someone. Or that person feels like, uh, or, or maybe you're reassuring that person, but they always feel discontent, like it's, you're not doing it well enough, then you feel like you're in a prison. So that's the opposite of the first one, uh, in a nutshell. <laughs> Number three is when his affection and his intensity towards you fluctuate wildly. I call this the roller coaster trap. And the roller coaster trap, it's a trap because the fluctuation of intensity, the fluctuation of not knowing what's going to hit you, is he going to be in a great mood or is he going to be completely distant? Is he going to be happy? Is he going to be like really like off put by me? Uh, that creates a sense of expectation that is what I've called in a few other videos variable reinforcement, which is the same thing that happens when you go to a casino and win a little bit of money and you're not sure when you want to win again. That type of intensity and that type of variable reinforcement schedule creates a craving in you for more. So it can put you in a trap where you're always trying to change your behavior, your intensity, your things to get someone to be that high for you. The, the challenge with this roller coaster is that when the person is really in it, he's in it. He's telling you how beautiful you are. He's being present. He's uh, maybe very clear about what he sees in you, he has ideas about the future, but when he's not, it's like a different person, like a split personality. You feel like you're going crazy sometimes. So this roller coaster trap is a challenge because when you feel it can get you looped into a situation that is not going to work out for you, there is not consistency in that human being to sustain, to create the grounding space that you need of safety so that you can open up your heart and move forward. Why? Because you open up your heart, he's great, and then next time you want to open up your heart again and you get a different person. That is a trap. And if the person that, you, that is doing this is unaware of it, you need to clearly communicate what's taking place, clearly communicate what your needs are, and see if this intensity roller coaster can fluctuate, become more steady. Because if, if it can't, it might be the end of your sanity for a while. Number four is what I call the confidence trap. And that's where his level of confidence is disproportionately higher than his level of humility and his level of empathy and his level of kindness. 
here's why this is such a challenge today. Because you, as a woman who is doing amazing things in the world, who has to put on a really, let's do it, let's take action type of energy to make things in the world, crave the energy of someone who can actually help you relax a little bit more through being masculine. The challenge when someone shows up with this type of energy is that it's harder for you to say no and harder for you to recognize. Because what happens when a guy has a disproportionate level of empathy and kindness versus confidence, it's easier for women today to say, I'm not into that guy, he's not exciting enough, he's a pushover. So it's easier for you to pass on those guys than it is for you to pass on someone who on paper seems to be doing great because those people are typically articulate and they can make things happen and they can make good, good income and they can show and present themselves in a way that seems coveted by more women. When a guy is coveted by more women, by definition, you'll find him more attractive, even if he isn't. <laughs> so the challenge with that thing is if his level of confidence is disproportionate with level of kindness, that's one of those situations where you may not be heard by him. He might hurt you and not really care about what you're feeling. He might be moving things forward for himself without the insight or thought about what his actions are having in the world around him and in other people close to him. If you feel like, I don't know what's wrong with me, I like him, he's like, he's such a cool guy and on paper he's great, but I don't feel seen, I don't feel heard, I feel disregarded, I feel disrespected. It might be that his level of empathy is not high enough to sustain a relationship that creates the level of intimacy that you're seeking right now. Number five, the chase me if you can trap. Chase me if you can is the type of guy that will not include you in his world. He will not include you with his friends, he will not include you in his deepest thoughts, he will not include you in his dreams, he will not include you with his family. That type of situation, obviously at the beginning of the dating relationship, things are what they are, it's you and him. But as the relationship progresses, as the dating progresses, if he's still someone who is finding excuses not why not to include you in his world, with his family, with his friends, then this is what I call the chase me if you can trap. And if you're one of those human beings who want to be included and who want to include them in your world, then this is one of the situations that may never work. Number six is where his needs for physical affection are very different from your own needs of physical attention, uh, affection. And that could be two ways. One, where he wants to touch you all the time, even in ways that feel weird and inappropriate, especially in front of other people, or the opposite, which is pretty common, which is where you want closeness and physical affection, you want to hold hands and you want him to look you in the eye and you want to make love and, you, and he has a more standoffish type of physical affection towards you, even if he's intelligent, even if he's smart, even if he's compatible with you in other ways. This area is so significant that marriages will break as a result of it. Relationships that seem to have so many things in common will end as a re result of a varying style of physical affection. So if you're with someone that you've communicated your needs with, that you've expressed what you want and need, which is important because if you're not expressing what you want and need, then he's not a mind reader. But when you express what you want and need, and it seems to be such a hard effort on, on his part to actually fulfill that, this is one that I would urge you to save yourself from years of pain if the physical affection part cannot coexist in a way that's healthy if you feel like you really have to crave his attention, his affection, then this is one of those that will hurt your mindset, will hurt your self-esteem, and will hurt your level of well-being for years to come. I hope these are helpful, useful, and insightful. If you like this video and you want to learn what is my strategy to help you to create the connection that you want, then I created a free training for you that you can click on the first link right now, start watching that right away, and it's gonna show you how you can attract better quality men and develop a conscious dating strategy that actually works in 2022 and beyond. If you enjoyed this video, click like and thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and uh, be notified of new episodes when they come out. Last but not least, if you're watching my video, you've done the law of attraction, you've watched other people's videos, uh, you've done therapy, and you're still not closer to getting what you want, you might be a candidate to work with me where I can help you get what you want in a fraction of the time. Second link in the description will allow you to apply 
to connect with me. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart, into your space, into your phone, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.